Hi there, this is the Hall family again. Today, we are doing a very short video on diaphragmatic excursion. This is because of a question that came up on our first tutorial, and uh, that was Marlene Yuseta who had that question. So just to help you out to understand a little bit more, what we're doing is to just do a display of how we're going to have that skill done. All right, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna be tapping you on your back, and then afterwards, I'm gonna give you instructions to take a deep breath in and hold it. When you feel me right on your back, you can breathe normally. And then afterwards, I'll ask you to in exhale, and then you hold it. And once you do that, you feel me right, then you can continue to breathe, all right? So what we do is we determine the level of where we expect the diaphragmatic pelvis to be, usually somewhere between seven, T7 and T10, down the mid scapula line is where we're going to start. So it's generally about here for him. All right, so we have our first mark just about there. This is basically what we're going to use as our baseline. You're supposed to do it on this side, and if you have to, do it on both sides. So you're going to do it on the other side as well. Of the first part of your assessment is to ensure that your lungs are changing, the, the, the sound of the lung is changing at the same um, height, because that indicates then that they are both working at the same level. Next step to this is, He's going to exhale, and when he exhales, we are going to tap upward. We are going to tap upward, and it's going to go from resonance to dullness. After, we, he's going to inhale, and we are going down from resonance to dullness. We're having dullness here because we're looking for a kidney. We're having um, dullness up here because we're going back behind the rib cage. All right, so now I'm going to have you take a deep breath out, all the way out, and I'm going to start right at this beginning point. All right, so we've got our first line right there. Thank you very much. Good job. So, are you ready? Yes. All right, so now we're going in and we're going So we have that change just about there. So this is what we are considering our diaphragmatic excursion. The distance from there is usually anywhere between an inch and a quarter to two inches. And for him, it is just about at that two the inch mark, which is within normal range. Now, if you find that being bigger, a greater distance, it's usually within a, phys a physically fit patient. He jumps around a lot to where if it was bigger, it wouldn't be surprising. Now, if you find somebody who has a shorter excursion, that means that their lungs are not fully expanding. So you might have somebody who has some kind of abdominal pressure or pain that's causing them to not fully expand their lung. Maybe they're pregnant. Maybe they simply just have pain. That's what that will cause them to not expand their lung as much. Now, what you're seeing, what you're going to see on the other side now, even though you start at the same side, the same point, the start mark is going to be the same. You're going to notice on the right side, you might see your excursion just about two centimeters, one, two centimeters, a little bit higher. Why? Your liver is there. Okay. So expect that you're going to start on the same level, but if your diaphragmatic excursion is just a little bit higher, that's an expected result. So that's pretty much it. If you have to, do it on both sides, all right? Have a great day.